For eons, the Red Sea has separated the continents of Asia and Africa. They're close enough to wave at each other, but far enough that moving between them requires planning. Ferries do the job, but it's time for something better. That's why engineers have envisioned an ambitious mega-project of tunnels and bridges that will not only link the two continents, but also reshape the region forever. Millions of years ago, the Arabian landmass slowly drifted away from Africa, opening a watery scar that we now call the Red Sea. This place is famous for its crystal-clear water that looks filtered even when it isn't, as well as for coral reefs that seem to be painted by an overachieving artist. Let's zoom in on one specific location, the Strait of Tiran. Every ship headed toward the upper ports squeezed through this one busy hallway, on the one side is Egypt, the Sinai Peninsula, rugged, golden, and sprinkled with resort towns. On the other side, it's Saudi Arabia, the Tabuk coast, where quiet desert hills stroll right down to neon blue water. The distance between them looks tiny on a map, almost mm. like someone forgot to connect the lines. That's because the strait is only about 8 miles from peninsula to peninsula, close enough that on a clear day you can sometimes see the opposite shoreline. It's a busy gateway, and it's the exact gap designers want to turn into a direct road and rail link. So what are they actually trying to build? The idea is to create one continuous route between the Sinai Peninsula and the Tabuk Coast. Engineers are still deciding whether it should be a bridge, a tunnel, or a hybrid, the combination of two. The problem is under the water. Near the shore, the bottom is shallow enough to support strong columns, but as you move farther out, the seabed drops quickly until it reaches about 900 feet. It's almost like walking off an underwater cliff. That sudden plunge is too deep for standard bridge supports. The design has to adjust to the landscape instead of forcing one shape across the whole gap. If they go with a bridge, the builders would place huge steel tubes called caissons on the seafloor. Think of them as giant metal buckets. Once they're in position, the water gets pumped out so crews can build a dry foundation inside. Concrete turns that space into a pillar rising from the seabed. The floating cranes drop long road sections between those pillars like puzzle pieces. It works well in shallow areas, but anchoring becomes difficult in deep waters due to high pressure, soft ground, and strong waves. Tunnels avoid this by going under the problem, literally. Crews can send tunnel boring machines called worms, or they can build submarine-sized tunnel segments on land and sink them into place. It's the same trick used in the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Megalink, which proves it works even in busy deep water. Now, people might look at the map and think, 8 hmm. miles? That doesn't sound so bad. In reality, it's nothing like tossing a giant tree trunk over a river and calling it a bridge. Cars, buses, and trains need those long, slow, friendly ramps that don't feel like a roller coaster. By the time you build those ramps on both sides, the whole thing could stretch to nearly 20 miles. That puts it in the same club as giants like the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel in the US or the King Fahd Causeway between Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. But it's not just the scale or unpredictable seabed that makes this intercontinental project challenging. There's also the climate. Temperatures regularly pass 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Concrete dries faster than planned, so crews have to cool it or work in shorter windows. Steel stretches in the heat just enough to make precise work annoying. And workers themselves cannot stand in direct sunlight for long without feeling like a baked potato. On top of that, the salty sea air chews through metal quicker than most people expect, so the whole structure needs tough protective layers and regular checkup if this project gets the green light, you're looking at a timeline of several years. A good comparison is the Orison link between Denmark and Sweden. It's only about 10 miles long and still took around four years to build in an environment that is much easier to handle than the Red Sea. Then there's the price tag. Early numbers land around $4 billion, but that feels more like a starting guess than a final bill. If they run into problems, that figure will almost certainly climb. There's also one other problem that must be brought up, swimming right under the surface. The Strait of Tiran is home to dolphins, rays, sea turtles, and even sharks. 
including harmless reef sharks that glide around like they're protecting the beautiful, colorful corals below. These reefs aren't just decoration. They're some of the healthiest in the entire Red Sea. Scientists say that in parts of the northern Red Sea, some corals tolerate higher temperatures than many others around the world, which makes these reefs especially valuable from a climate resilience perspective. That means even a single mistake during construction could cloud the water with sediment, and that alone can smother corals like dust settling on wet paint. The same goes for noise, drilling, and ship movement. Reefs can't exactly move away if annoyed like fish can. Once they're damaged, it can take decades for them to grow back. That is, if they grow back. To avoid that, planners have to build in ways that keep the water as clear and calm as possible. Construction zones may need silt curtains to stop sediment from drifting away. Heavy equipment might have to avoid areas with dense coral clusters. Some sections could lean more toward tunnels instead of pillars to leave the seabed undisturbed. Every decision has to match the underwater map, not just the one on land. On top of that, the whole project would need constant supervision from scientists and inspectors. They would have to check how cloudy the water becomes and how marine animals behave during the work. If something looks off, the only responsible move is to slow down or change the method, instead of just rushing to finish faster and leaving the reef to pay the price. But if everything finally clicks into place, the payoff is massive. Right now, if you decide to skip the ferry and stay on land, the map punishes you. You have to loop all the way around the top of the Red Sea, through other countries, on a drive more than a thousand miles. All of that just to cross a stretch of water that is only a few miles wide at its narrowest point. It's like walking around the entire block just to knock on your neighbor's door. A permanent link would change this. Travel time drops, ports on both sides become easier to reach, and a drive from Africa to Asia suddenly feels as normal as crossing a long highway bridge. Not to mention the coolest part, which would be the view if they decided on the hybrid version. You begin your journey on the Sinai side, with the desert behind you and the Red Sea ahead. Instead of waiting in a ferry line, you roll onto a rising ramp while the water glimmers below. The road dips into a tunnel under a busy shipping lane, and before long, you're back in the sunlight on the other side, now on a different continent. The train version could feel even smoother. You find your seat, the doors close, and the train glides toward the crossing without any stop-and-go traffic. It slips into its own tunnel section, runs quietly under the sea, and pops back up on the Asian side before you have even finished scrolling your feet. For tourists, that could mean more resorts, more quick weekend trips, and a brand new continental hop that becomes a must-try experience. For delivery trucks, every hour saved is money earned. Even local towns would feel the change. They'd get more visitors, more trade, and bigger profits. A link like this doesn't just connect land. It connects economies, ports, and everyday life. And that's a giant opportunity, as long as the underwater world stays protected. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.